Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to another session of Not Perfect Zen. Uh, here's my contact information. If you ever want to post one of your tiles, I'd appreciate it if you please put at BBL underscore tangles on your tile so that it informs me on both Instagram and Facebook that you have posted your art. And I just love seeing what you do, and I'm very appreciative when you share it with me. Okay, today I'm going to continue with the patterns from the poster called 102 Tangles of Zentangle. <clears throat> if you're new to this, uh, that was the poster that introduced me to Zentangle. And now I'm going through those 102 patterns and showing you what they are. Uh, today we're going to use a three and a half inch Zentangle tile, a Micron 01, a graphite pencil, and a blending stump, also known as a tortillon. <clears throat> if you don't have these supplies, use anything that you have on hand. That's a nice thing about Zentangle is you can do it with anything that you have. All right. I want to start by saying that I am very grateful. And I know I think I say this every time, but I'm so grateful to have Zentangle. I'm grateful for that poster that introduced me and uh, grateful to do it every day. Okay, we're going to start with our four corner dots. And I'm going to place mine, eh, I guess it's about the width of that graphite pencil. And we're going to do this in a square grid today. So I'm going to do mine straight across. <clears throat> now, if you want to work your grid in pencil first, you can. But it's just going to be a very simple pattern or grid, kind of like a square window panes. Okay, let's go ahead and ink in our border. I like to do it in pencil first to get it right. Not perfect, but just get it the way that I like it. Okay. So I have already taught Hollabaw, which is just, <clears throat> sorry, um, like little roadways or something that go over and under each other. But we're going to find uh, close to a midpoint. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to put two lines across. We don't want it very wide. <clears throat> we just want it to be a divider for us. I'm going to turn my tile and put the next one across. And I'm going to stop and go under. And then put my next one. Again, stop your pen and go under. All right, now we're going to divide this one in half. At least it's close to being in half. <clears throat> I'm sorry that my allergies bother me every day. Okay, so I'm going to switch and go over here just to 
give it a different kind of over and under look. So we stop, pick up our pen, go under these. Now, if you want to, you could just go straight across these and you'd end up with a little square there in the center and that's just fine, okay? So I'm gonna turn now and do this one. Okay, and then this one. So see how it kind of weaves over and under. <clears throat> this one's gonna go <laughs> under on all of these, it's okay. This is just a grid to hold our patterns. Okay, is it exactly square? No, but it's okay. In the beginning of the video, you saw a picture of this, and this was just me playing around with some of the patterns that are in 102 Tangles that I haven't taught yet. This is Ambler. It's also known as E-Mingle. Depends on how you put it. If you put this into a big grid, they call it E-Mingle. If it looks like a ribbon, it's called ambler, but it's the same pattern. And then this is B light. Okay, so these are the two patterns we're gonna do today. And we're gonna start in the corners with B light. And I'm gonna put not very big, but just a little curve there. And then we're gonna fill it in. Okay. And then we're just going to add some auras. And when this gets close to the center point, I'm going to turn and do B light again coming in this direction. This is a variation that I've seen that looks really good on this style. Okay. Again, we're having our auras go toward the center. And I'm not worried whether it has the exact same number of uh, little rings, I guess you could call it. All right, and then we're going to fill this in. All right, we're filling in the space between these. All right, so there's our first corner. We're going to do the same thing on this corner. We're going to start at that edge. I did one of these before, and I started here. It didn't look right, <clears throat> just because I wanted them to be kind of mirrored. Okay, so we're going to add our auras. until we get close to the center. And we're gonna do it on this side. Yeah, 
Okay, when those lines get close to meeting, we're just going to stop and fill that in. Okay, I'm trying not to go too slow. But what I usually do at the end of a video is come back and touch things up if I need to. All right, do the same thing in this corner. I think I do better <clears throat> with my pen facing what I'm trying to aura. So that's the nice thing about Entangled tiles. We have limited space to draw, so it's not so overwhelming, and it's easy to turn it. And when you keep your hand in the same spot and do the same stroke, like this aura again and again you begin to get muscle memory, which I don't fully understand that, but you learn how to do things more easily because you've done it several times. All right, now we're gonna fill this in. I really love the, the classic tangles, those from the very beginning. They're easy to draw, easy to remember, and I like using black ink on a white tile. Still is my favorite thing to do. Okay, so. One more down here. <laughs> My auras are not all the same distance apart. You can see some of these are kind of close. Some are not, it's okay. And you can see that this is not a perfect square. And that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and add one on this side. And then fill it in. And that one's a little bit fat, but since I'm filling that in, I can bring it over a little bit. I do not speed up my videos. I know that this takes time, but if you're following along with me, then you can leave it in real time. You can slow it down, you can speed it up, fast forward. That's the beauty of videos. <laughs> okay. So like I said, I'll come back and fill that in a little bit darker. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to put the same pattern. Again, this is B light. We're going to do the same thing in the center, but it's going to look a little different. So we're going to make our section of an orb, <laughs> it looks like. So just make your arc, fill it in. But we're going to make these big. All right, so we're going to leave some space on this. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing in this next square. Fill it in. Okay. Again, big auras. And I'm trying to get mine to start where it kind of matches up with that other one. Same thing here. And I am trying to keep them about the same distance apart. It won't be perfect, <laughs> but it's okay. All right, last one. Fill it in. And I went a little bit into that line, but it's okay. So, to get these to meet. I think it has a fun effect. And it's fun to draw big sometimes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I do have allergies and it <sighs> causes problems. Okay, now I skipped over this aura and between these two lines, I'm going to just put these little orbs. I'm not making perfect circles. <laughs> Just keep going around, space them the way that you would like. Or you can leave these empty. You don't have to put anything inside. You could put um, triangles, you could put anything in there. Okay, so I'm gonna skip this one and I'm just gonna start putting straight lines. And if you kind of always point towards center, they'll turn out good. Try 
trying to keep them about the same space apart. Okay, so just keep going to you fill these in. Or like I said, leave them empty. Whatever you'd like to do. Okay? And this is going to look even better once we get it shaded. So the next thing that we're going to do is ambler and these other squares. And when we finish, the effect is really cool um, when you put the shading on. Okay, so with Ambler, we start a little bit down in the block, and then we go over, and then we're going to stop when we get to about the same distance that we have there. Then we're going to go straight down, and then we're going to come over, and we're keeping that same distance, so when I get there, I'm going to go up, and then we're just going to keep going in, back up, cross, trying to keep about the same aura there, okay? Now just move over to the next one. This one's a little bit wide. But it's not going to matter. It's still going to look fine. Okay, just take your time. Just keep going in. Turn your tile and repeat. Same thing in this one. Because you need to focus on this a little bit, it helps stop my monkey mind <laughs> when I do these patterns. All right. Turned my tile, repeat over here, oops, looks like I made that aura a little bit fat, doesn't matter. What matters is feeling the zen and for me it's the joy of drawing and accomplishing a piece of art but I know it's not being graded I can share it's not a contest By the way, this pattern, Bee Light, this one is part of the Inktober Tangles coming up very soon. It's going to be fun. I hope you join us for that. 
Okay, I got distracted. <laughs> All right, one more. All right, there we go. I think it's cool. <laughs> All right, so like I said, I'll come back and ink in this area a little bit better, and uh, you'll see that image at the beginning of this um, video, because I always show them. Um, we're going to add shading on each side of this line this hollow ball line. And you want your pencil to actually touch the line that you're shading. Like I could kind of see a space in there. You don't want a space in there. It just your eye notices it. I don't know why. Okay. So now we're taking our blending stump and just gonna gently soften that and pull it toward the center, but not all the way in. We want the center to still be white. Okay, I'm actually going to put a little bit more graphite down there. I want this to be a little bit darker there on the sides, so you can tell that it's brighter there in the center. So, and then soften it so that you don't have any harsh lines. Pull it towards the center. And then with what's left on my tortillon, I'm just going to add a little bit of shading where these lines go under. Okay, so let's just soften all of these. And add a little bit more. If you happen to do this on a colored tile, then you can use your white charcoal to add highlight there in the center. Okay. Sometimes I come back with an even darker um, graphite pencil for the shading right next to the line and let's see. well I was looking for my eraser I got it right there in the center and I didn't mean to but it's okay A little bit of graphite out here. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to put just a little bit more right against the line.
you know, when you start out with just a little bit, then it's easy to add. You can also take some away with a kneaded eraser, but I have lost mine somehow. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, so this is a kneaded eraser. Knead it, as in K-N-E-A-D. And I can get it <laughs> a very fine tip, and I just want to lighten that a little bit in the center. So you see our hollow ball. Okay. I also have a tiny eraser, but I'm not sure where it's at. All right, so next we're going to do shading on Ambler. And to do that, we're going to start in the corner and just put a line mostly straight across in each direction. So we're hitting the corners, okay? and then going through. And then, again, I'm telling myself to stop going <laughs> inside of that part. <clears throat> and then across here. And it'll come together when we get all these on there. All right, so we're going across and across, trying to touch the corners. And let's just go ahead and do all of these. Not heavy, just a little graphite across the centers. Just keep going till you get some X's across each of these. And then we're just going to soften it. I had fun with this one when I was <coughs> trying to figure it out. And what I thought was really cool <laughs> when I got it done was how this makes a full square around this. I just really like how that came out. And I did get graphite down in the centers. Clean it up a little bit if you want to. Maybe I'll find my tiny eraser <laughs> and fix it. All right, so where was our top? That was the top. That was our beginning. Put your chop. Someone asked me recently, what is your chop? That is kind of like your 
tiny signature. This says, this art is mine. And I tend to always put mine over in this corner. So there's my L. A B. Another B. And the dots for my initials. All right, there we go. So we have B light and Ambler in a hollow ball grid. And again, these are all part of 102 Tangles of Zentangle. I'm really enjoying doing these patterns and going over them again. And some of these I haven't done in a long time, so it's fun. And I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks again for joining me today. Here's that first tile that I showed you that has Ambler and Be Light. And I'll do these on another time. So there we go. Thanks again for joining me. Again, if you post on social media, please add at BBL underscore Tangles. And I'll see you again next week. And then the 31 days of Inktober starts. Hooray! <laughs> it's going to be fun. Thank you. Bye.